Hi, I'm Stu from Hivewind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this Getting Started in Home Automation video series, we're going to introduce you to the smart home world of gadgets and how to integrate them into a central system to control them all from maybe your smartphone or from your voice or even better, automate these actions. Home automation and smart home are commonly used phrases these days. And I feel like a lot of people mistake that home automation is the same as using a smart home gadget where you can control it using your phone or maybe even say, Alexa, turn off the spotlight. Okay. And they think that that's home automation, which it isn't. There's nothing wrong with smart home gadgets and, and don't get me wrong, we'll actually be talking about smart home gadgets and the use of voice assistants uh, and smartphone apps throughout this video series. But what I want to clarify is home automation is slightly different. Home automation is the idea of using the state of some of your home accessories to then trigger other actions with other accessories. For example, if I get home on a cold, wet, rainy night and it's after dark uh, and there's no lights on, it can be a little bit scary if I'm by myself uh, and maybe I've, I can't find my keys or something like that. So what would be nice in that circumstance is the system detects when I arrive home and it turns on the porch light so that I can find the right key. And maybe at the same time, it turns on the heater and it turns on the hallway lights so that I don't have to worry about anything. I just arrive home and get inside the house. Another real world example that I have is uh, I have a temperature and humidity sensor in my ensuite bathroom so that when we take a shower, the humidity in the room rises above a certain threshold and it turns on the exhaust fan to start venting that steam. And then after we've finished our shower, as the humidity lowers and lowers and it gets back below another threshold, if it stays below that other threshold for about 30 minutes, it then will stop the exhaust fan so that uh, it's not just constantly running. These are all kind of luxury items. You don't necessarily need any of this stuff. It's just things to make your life a little bit easier. So we're gonna do a more detailed video about automations a little bit later on. Automations tend to consist of three things, especially in the, uh, in the home automation platform that we're gonna talk about. There's a trigger, and that's what causes the automation to occur. There's a condition. So when that trigger happens, this condition must be met. Then for the action to occur, the action is what happens when that automation runs. For example, the trigger can be I get home, the condition can be after dark, and the action can be it turns on the porch light so that I've got enough light to see the lock and my keys. Now that we've clarified those terms, let's take a look at getting started with a home automation system. There's a bunch of different ways you could do this. In my opinion, the best place to get started is using a free open source piece of software called Home Assistant uh, and installing it on a Raspberry Pi. Now, Home Assistant is a free and open source home automation platform designed to act as a central hub for all of your different smart home components. One of the missions of Home Assistant right on their front page, and let's take a look, is an open source home automation that puts local control and privacy first. Yes, you need to have a home network for the local control to work, but you don't necessarily need to have an internet connection to the outside world for everything to work. There's some really great things about Home Assistant. Firstly, there are tons of integrations already available for Home Assistant to integrate things like smart lights, smart TVs, smart doorbells, smart locks, CCTV cameras, thermostats, blinds, garage door openers, smart speakers, weather services, robot vacuums, smart energy meters, solar power systems, water heaters, and even public transport services, to name a few. Secondly, 
is frequently being updated by the developers to introduce new features and patch security holes um, and uh, integrate introduce new integrations that being said there are occasionally some downsides to a frequent update sequence if like me you've been using home assistant for a while some updates change the way older integrations work and that means you might need to rejig some settings from time to time if your settings get broken by an update the last thing that i really particularly love about home assistant is free Home Assistant is free and open source software, as I said before, and this means that you get the software for free, the code is available for download and to, for you to take a look and dig around in if you're so inclined and you want to get your hands dirty. This also means because of the open source nature of the code that the Home Assistant community can and frequently do write custom components for Home Assistant some of those custom components can make their way through validation testing and make their way into the main distribution of home assistant so those are the reasons why i recommend home assistant now home assistant is not the only home automation platform out there it's the one that i recommend let's talk about the raspberry pi the Raspberry Pi is a single board computer and as you can see it's around about the size of a credit card or a business card. It's a little bit bigger actually. Now it, this is a Raspberry Pi Model 4 uh, and it comes in a couple of different flavors. This one is the 4 gigabyte uh, flavor. The, they start at a 2 gigabyte flavor for 35 US dollars and uh, this one the 4 gigabyte version is around or about 55 US dollars um, and they go up to around about 75 US dollars for the 8 gigabyte model here in Australia because of things like exchange rate and the Australia tax um, GST etc um, they do cost a little bit more I believe uh, this one the Four gigabyte version I paid around about $90 for. Now that is just for the, the unit itself. It doesn't include things like the micro SD card, which you also need to uh, get one of those. Um, I would recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes um, for the purposes of Home Assistant. And you'll also need a power adapter. The Raspberry Pi Model 4 uses a usb type c power adapter that's this one here so if you've got an old phone charger that produces more than about 15 watts um, then that will do the trick for you um, you can also purchase the raspberry pi power adapter um, as part of your pro uh, part of a bundle um, and we'll actually put some links to that in the description below where you can find those uh, and most likely amazon or another retail will have retailer will have them for you so why do i recommend the raspberry pi 4 well the raspberry pi 4 being a single board computer using an ARM processor, that ARM processor is very similar to what you might find in an iPhone or an iPad. Um, I say similar, it's not the same. You can't run, uh, you can't run iPad OS or iPhone OS on the Raspberry Pi, but it is very similar. Uh, it runs Linux, so there's a bunch of different Linux distributions that you can uh, download and install on your Raspberry Pi and Home Assistant actually already has a pre-built Linux distribution just for running Home Assistant on your Raspberry Pi. So let's get started with installing Home Assistant on our Raspberry Pi and the first step is going to be to download it from our website. So let's go over to the Home Assistant website and we're going to click on get started. The instructions we're going to walk through are actually listed here on this page. So um, suggested hardware it actually suggests a Raspberry Pi model 4 which is a great place to start it suggests a 2 gigabyte model I've got the 4 gigabyte model it's overkill first thing to do is to download and extract the home assistant image so let's go and do that and we're going to grab I'm going to grab the 64-bit version so we're going to click on that 
and it's going to download that for us. You see I've actually already downloaded it. And it's going to download this img.gz and that's a gzipped version of uh, the image file, the .img file. Now on Mac or Linux, you should just be able to double click that and extract the file. You may need to do a little additional work with a third party program such as 7-zip if you're on Windows. I'm going to firstly take my micro SD card and my micro SD adapter, pop that in there, and I'm going to then insert that into the SD card reader on my Mac over here. First things first, I'm going to grab this .img file, which I just double clicked on to extract from the gzip, and drag that and drop that on here. So you see we've got the image, it's already automatically detected that I want to use the Apple SD Reader Media. We're going to click on Flash. And then that's going to kick off, and uh, it's going to ask for my password, so I'm going to type that in here. Uh, and that's going to kick off and start flashing that SD card for me. Um, while we're waiting for that uh, card to flash, I'm just going to pop the Raspberry Pi into this 3D printed Raspberry Pi case that I made. And once the flashing is done, we'll pop the SD card in. Okay, fantastic. So that has finished flashing. So I've just pulled the SD card out and I'm going to pop it into the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the next step is that we need to go plug this into power and ethernet. Um, and then we should be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi on its IP address. So stay tuned and we'll be back in just a second to show you that. Okay, welcome back. So we have now gone and plugged our Raspberry Pi into USB type C power and we've also plugged in ethernet. So we need to now find out what the IP address of that device is. And I'm going to open this application called LANSCAN. LANSCAN's available on the App Store, so we will take a quick look here and we can now you can probably use something similar to um, to LANSCAN if you're on Windows or Linux um, LANSCAN is just one that I use so we're just going to open that up and we'll go allow that's fine and you'll see that it's figured out the, the IP address of this machine. So what we're going to do is quickly do a scan. And what we're looking for is something with this vendor ID of Raspberry Pi Trading Limited. So I'm going to take a pretty good guess that this 192.168.1146 is going to be the IP of our Raspberry Pi. Something else you can do now I happen to have multiple home assistants running on this network. So you can run, type in home assistant dot local and port 8123. And sometimes that will work. That's not working for me in this instance. What I'm going to do is 192.168.1.146 and 8123. And you'll see we've got preparing home assistant and this can take up to 20 minutes. So once this is done, we'll come back uh, in a couple of minutes when this is ready um, and we will uh, go through setting up. So uh, stay tuned and we'll be back in just a minute. While we're waiting, don't forget to uh, click subscribe down below. And if you click that bell icon so you can get updates when I release new videos as well. Okay, and uh, it's been maybe about five minutes um, since we logged into the console and we're already um, at this setup screen. So that's probably one of the benefits of having the additional RAM, the four gig version instead of the two. So we're just gonna get started by creating a user account. We're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna change this to, uh, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a password. 
Now it's important when you are creating a password to make sure that this is something that is secure, but also something that you're going to remember. We'll create that account. So we're just gonna um, start off by giving our home and name, and I'm gonna call this Hive Nemo. We also need to uh, select a, uh, find our, our location. So I'm gonna hit detect on this, and this is going to use a one-time request to an external service to figure out roughly where we are, and it has correctly figured out that we're in Melbourne. Um, we're going to go to the time zone, and I'm going to type in Australia and then Sydney. It's gonna figure out the time zone there. Um, and we're going to set our elevation. Now, um, with the map here, we can click on here and select our exact location. Now, I don't live in the Melbourne CBD, but for my own privacy, I'm not going to add my exact location here. This is a demo server, so we don't need to worry about that. And we can choose our unit system here as well. Now, obviously, being in Australia, we're going to use metric, so Celsius and kilograms. If you like freedom units, by all means, select those. I'm going to click Next. And it's figured out that we've already got some stuff on the local network here that we can integrate. Now, I'm not going to integrate any of this stuff just now. We're going to take a closer look at integrations in another video. Um, but if you wanted to, and, and I would recommend if you are getting started and you've already got some smart home devices on your network, I'd totally recommend getting those set up uh, at this time just to save yourself some, some effort. It's actually pretty straightforward. You just need to click on it and it'll ask you for what details you, you, it needs. So um, it's a step-by-step -step process. We're not gonna follow through with that just yet. We're just gonna hit finish. And we've been dropped down onto the console. As you can see that it's pretty sparse right now because we've not set very much up. We've got some information about the weather, you know, um, it's sunny right now, 15.3 degrees. Um, it's very close to springtime, which is fantastic. Um, we've got information about where the sun is, whether it's above or below the horizon, um, when it next rises, those kinds of things, um, and a weather forecast for the weekend. It looks like it's actually going to be kind of a nice weekend um, and into uh, a fairly dreary um, Monday and Tuesday. So uh, that's always nice. Um, that pretty much covers off what we're going to cover in this video. I hope this helped you to get started on your journey with home automation. Uh, I really appreciate your time watching this video uh, and joining me on the journey. If you liked the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so that you can get notified when I do upload new videos. Um, and last of all, remember to share this video with your friends and family who might also be interested in home automation. It really does help me as I'm trying to grow this channel. We'll be doing some uh, different things with the channel. We're going to do some re reviews, some news, all sorts of things in the home automation space. Um, as well as this getting started series. Uh, at the moment, we've got planned roughly 10 videos for the getting started series, and hopefully those will come out fairly regularly in the next little while. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at the user interface in Home Assistant and um, dive a bit deeper into how it all works. And then after the next video, we're going to take a look at choosing home automation accessories. So again, I hope this helped. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. See you next time.